Hi everybody, Matthew Morano again here uh, playing with the new version of Resolve uh, 8.1. Um, what we'll do right now is something pretty amazing. We're gonna go from Final Cut Pro 10 where we have sequence, go to Resolve to translate the project for Final Cut Pro 7. So we're gonna bring a project from Final Cut Pro 10 to Final Cut Pro 7. And then we'll try to bring the Final Cut Pro 7 project into Final Cut Pro 10, which up to now has never been, has never been done. So just stay with me and look at that. So let's open Final Cut Pro 10, uh, where I've already edited a small timeline. Uh, the first clip, uh, the first clip is a car coming in on the shot. Um, I've applied a uh, time warp on it, so let's put it back to 100%. This is the original clip, so this is the clip with 50% time warp to make it slower. And we've attached a clip to it, uh, on, um, so it's like on another track. But it's not a track, it's fine Pro 10. And a uh, third clip which cuts with the first one and brings us to the dissolve 2 and to the last clip. So, um, we're gonna try and bring this to uh, Resolve. So we've already did it with round trip. So you just click the project, select file export, and save the XML in a folder. So it's a there's no other um, option to choose. So you save the XML from uh, the project window, selecting your timeline, and then quit Final Cut Pro 10. And then you open Resolve. Resolve will open. We're working with version 8.1, the new version that just came out today. And you choose your user, which is for me, Mathieu. And go directly to the Conform tab. Then click the Load button to choose your XML coming from, from Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, Make sure that the automatically automatically import source is selected, and you have your timeline in Resolve, with the time warps, with the tracks, and um, even with the, the cross dissolve that's coming. There, everything goes fine. The cross dissolve is there. All the clips are there. So we're just gonna grade the, the clips basically just to make sure that we see the difference between the original clips and the graded ones when we send them to uh, Final Cut Pro 7. Then grade, give it a little blue and copy it to all the other clips. This one, oh, this one's a bit too dark, so I'm just gonna play with it a bit. Okay, not bad. There. Where they should do it. And now you save the project. It's important to save the project, save all the properties, because now we're gonna go and render this project to disk. So since the clips are in H.264, I want to go in a better resolution, better codec, so I choose ProRes 422. Choose a new folder where to put the renders. I have the project in there somewhere. There it is. Folder and then add a render a render folder at the end. So Resolve will create a new folder with this name and save the renders in there. There we go. And the browser with the render button. There we go. So now it's rendering with blue grade on it. It's quite fast. I'm only using a, a new iMac, but uh, it's doing the job pretty well. Pretty well. It's quick, it's faster than real time actually. So, only a couple seconds to go. Here we go. And now uh, we will close the render window and go to the con conform page again. Conform tab, select your um, the, the timeline and go to go to export. Here we go. And then choose a place to export the uh, XML and choose XML file, which is the format of XML for uh, Final Cut Pro 7. The other one is only for Final Cut Pro 10. 
So, XML file. So now we open Final Cut Pro 7. We have a new project and go to open XML just like we did in the old days. We choose the file and boom! We have a timeline. We have a clip with the time warp. We have the second clip that was connected in Final Cut Pro 10, which is now on a second uh, track in uh, Final Cut Pro 7. So, plays well, we have the blue grade on it. And then jump to. But we now have a problem with the uh, transition. It's not a crossfade, it's a cross. it's a cross zoom, so. This didn't translate very well. It's a cross zoom. So we're gonna remove that and replace it with basic cross dissolve. So now we have a cross dissolve back, but all the handles were there, so there's no much trouble changing it. And we have the grade. Still have the blue grade on the last shot. So it was it was quite painless to do it. A round trip for, from the round trip going from Final Cut Pro 10 to Resolve and back in Final Cut Pro 7. So now let's go the other way around. Let's do a duplicate of this sequence with the crossfade and call it Final Cut Pro 7 and export an XML from it. So right click, export XML and uh, Resolve wants uh, version 5 so we'll take version 5, click OK and save it as Final Cut Pro 7 XML. So, call it version 5 for the version of the XML. So now let's open Resolve. There we go. So we're still in the Conform page. And I went and import the Final Cut Pro 7 timeline. So everything is there. And we still have a crossfade. So we're uh, playing playback, so we, we still have the blue grade on it though. So we'll move it to a more uh, yellowish grade to see again the difference between the, the Final Cut Pro 7 version and the new version we'll bring in Final Cut Pro 10. So here we go. Uh, make it more yellow, a little bit hotter, more yellow again, hot colors. And then we do the render. So again, I choose the, uh, the codec and a new place to put the renders. So FCP7 version 5, just like the, uh, the XML, and we export that. It's a big, it's even quicker when you render from ProRes to ProRes than from H.264 to ProRes. Here we go, just a couple seconds left. Here we go, and we close the uh, render window, save it, and go back to the conform page. So you select the timeline again and export uh, FCP10 XML and save it. So now on this you'll see that uh, it says that there's a problem with cross dissolve effect and it's going to replace it with the uh, effect called cross dissolve so no problem there <laughs> and close this and uh, we have an XML for Final Cut Pro 10 so let's see how it goes from there close resolve and open Final Cut Pro 10 so this is the first um, timeline we had before going to Resolve and now we're gonna import the XML coming from Resolve which is the result of the Final Cut Pro 7 timeline import and then we have the project and again everything is there the time warp is still there still connected to the right clip at the, at the uh, right place so uh, we still have all the overlap and um, we have a cross dissolve with handles. So this is how it goes. If you have Final Cut Pro 7 timelines you want to bring in Final Cut Pro 10, that's the way to go. And also from Final Cut Pro 10 to Final Cut Pro 7. To 
do some maybe some online on there. So once again, it was Matthew Morano for Funcat Montreal. Thank you.